and welcome back to the channel. Today is a bit of a different video. This channel has mainly been freshwater content. However, for those of you that don't know, I actually have a nano saltwater aquarium. Today's video is going to be focused on that and we're gonna have way more saltwater related videos coming out in the near future. I'm just gonna be very patient because it's a new tank, it's a new sort of learning curve and I wanna make sure that I know everything before sharing it to you. So on my birthday, the same day I got my native Australian lungfish, it's doing amazingly, update video coming very soon, <laughs> but um, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I went down to Nature Aquariums on the 17th of March and I wanted to get some of my very first corals for the tank. The reason I wanted to do that is because the tank is doing amazingly and was doing amazingly. The fish went in, they were thriving, eating really healthy. The tank went through its algae stage, it settled in really well and um, it, you know, it just cleaned up. So the tank was really stable and I felt confident that if I got some of my first corals for that tank, they would thrive and that's exactly what happened. So we headed down to Nature Aquariums completely unannounced and that's a really important factor that I'm going to bring up in just a sec. Before that, um, let's thank the traditional custodians of the land, the land I'm filming on, the land that you're watching this video on, and also the really amazing people that are managing our land at the moment, like our councils, park rangers. You already know who they are. A massive thank you to them, and a massive thank you to you for watching this video. But I went down to Nature Aquariums, and I met up with Jonathan Jordan there, and he was absolutely amazing, along with all the other staff that I met at Nature Aquariums. And basically, I wanted to ask Jono, Tons of questions about what would be some of the best corals for my salt water tank. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to begin off with the Blaster Musa hint hint. May have been one of the corals I got. And um, we're going to talk about some of the corals. Then we'll just, you know, enjoy. We'll talk about some of the, the more harder corals to keep. Everything like that. So you're running shotgun. We're going to take you and let's head down to Nature Aquariums. So just ask some easy coral. Easy corals, yeah. So... Possibly so them. The Blastomusa here. Yep. So they're they're very easy and they um they like low light areas. Okay, so cool. dark areas under yep. ledges, really good. Um, they can really just grow off the reflection of the bottom of the sand. Right. Um, they're really strong. Um, they're good because for beginners, if you lose a polyp, yeah. You know, like some of these, you see they've lost polyps in the past. Yeah. Um, they lose polyps really really easily. Um, but you're not going to lose the whole colony. Deshi corals here. Oh, so right, deshis yeah. are found on uh, mud, mud flats or uh, right. sandy weird, areas yeah. like that, uh, where they just kind of sit on there. Normally they have, oh, you can these see. have been cut because most people want yeah. the base to be flat. flat. But they normally got like a, a cone, yeah. which is dug into the sand so they don't move. Right. Um, but they're really, really easy as well to look after. Yeah. Um, and they come in some great colours, like we've got these speckled ones. Cool. Uh, oh. Elegance coral here, so these are our assorted elegance here. Yep. Um, there's obviously ultra colours, like the yellows, and they've got some different tip colours and that things like that. Yep. Uh, they can touch and you can have a nice little garden. I normally put them uh, near the bottom on the sand, but up against the rock. Okay. So it kind of looks, you know, not so random. Yeah. The polyps don't necessarily like to touch the sand. Yep. So they will lose a bit of extension if you don't have them propped up. Okay. Um, by propping them up, they will allow them to open up a little bit more. Right. Um, but you can see this one's quite nice, little tinges. Yeah, pink green and green. And green. Uh -huh. um, some purple tips here. And then you've got some base colors. They come in lots of varieties. Like this one, you would say, has got black black stems yeah. and green. Um, and the most rarest would probably be gold tip. Yeah. And, and the black elegance. R oh, right. So cool. black elegance is totally black. I've got one that I could send you a photo of, but it's... Yeah. Um, it's not spectacular colours, but it's it's red. Yeah, so. just yeah, cool, cool. Cause like say with these elegants, right? They get pretty big, and I yep. was thinking for an elegance for my smaller tank. But what would you do when, or will, like, would they stay to the size of the tank, or are no, they gonna get coral? Will just keep growing. Keep growing. They, okay. They, they they will just keep growing to the point where they will reach out and they'll sting other coral. A lot of people will frag them. I'm not game enough to frag elegance. They're quite hard to frag. Because it's just one big fleshy chunk. I've seen so one like person how... do it. I've seen a, a, a gentleman named Shane do it. Okay. And he's a very good fragger that works for a, a company called Sustainable Reefs. Oh, yeah. Yep. company doing great things. Uh -huh. um, but I am not game enough because the way he does it is just smashes it into little bits. And, wow. Um, I'm more of cut around polyps. I'm at that stage. Yeah. I'm doing it. So I'll go something small, man. I'll go something small. It's gonna take a long time to grow because coral, you know, maybe grow ten centimeters a year, one right. to ten. 
So uh, that would be like that a piece like that one there would be quite a few years old. Very old. Wow, okay. Um, and then obviously all sort of morphs. Yeah. Uh, fluffies and so these are all Corella morphs. Right. So maybe some Redactus in here. I think that there's a Redactus here. Okay. And how do you tell the difference between the Redactus and uh, Redactus that have the more threaded what are you, frilly oh, cool. edges, yeah, edges and a little more bubbly. Yeah. Uh, where the Corella morphs are a little more smooth. Yeah. And more rounded um, cool. edges. And and what's that little tree looking like? That's uh, actually a Xenia. So this happens quite oh quite, yeah quite cool. common on the morphs because they're found in the same sort of areas. Right. Okay. And Xenia leaves a little bit behind when they like pull it out. Okay. Um, and then you get all these little bits of softies growing on. Right. As bonuses. Over here is all our, our frags. Okay. So all this stuff here is uh, propagated. Right. Um, some of it's from monsoon, some it's from salty pets. Yeah. Um, and some are from cans marine. Right. And we do some in, in house as well. Oh, cool. So these are all, well, are they like captive, like propagated um, from So the mothers were, 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 right. were captive, and what they do is they fragment it, so they yeah. chop um, the new growth off, or they chop it up. Cool. And they leave a little bit for um, propagation yeah. to grow out, and then they, they, they let them in crust and they sell the, the growth. Right. So. Therefore, and the since these are like accustomed to tank environments, so they'd tank be great hardened, for... And yeah. also this is a... Frags are good for people that are um, wild conscious. Yeah. They don't want things that are taken from the ocean. Yeah. Um, so this is better for the environment. And this is actually the future of, of the hobby. Of, of corals, yeah. Cool. Um, at the moment we're taking a lot from the wild, which actually doesn't damage the wild. There's a lot of studies yeah. to say... Sustainable harvesting that and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But um, the plan is to not take anything. Right. You know, by a certain point, and, and without fragging, we need the broad stock to do this. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we need to learn, and we need to discover what's you know, yeah. how to do it, and that, that's what we're doing now. Yeah, and then this is the, the soft corals. This is the, the beginner. Yeah. Perfect. So this is where I am. <laughs> this, yeah, this is our cleanup. You can see a little red line cleaner shrimp here. Oh, that's awesome. It's, yeah, I've got some of those in the, in the cages, but. And, uh, Burnt sausage cucumber. Oh yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got toad stores here. We got um, yeah, simulara, uh, star polyps. Not star, sorry, organ polyps. Yeah. Organ pipes. Um, yeah. So a mixture of all easy. This is probably the best for a beginner. I would always right. suggest a simulara because they're green, they're beautiful, they got movement, and, and most people tall, will be, yeah. Most people will be happy to keep them long term. Okay. Um, they're not going to take over and all that. Yep. Yeah. And then we obviously got clean up roots and blennies and some trikers and some strombus. Yeah, stuff. cool. Rightio, so after looking at some of those beginner corals, like the blastos, the mushrooms, which I have got to say, they're the two corals that I'm really leaning towards in terms of getting. The sinularia, sinularia, they were really great as well because they were tall, had those sort of like branchy alien arms, and also the elegance coral has been one of my personal favorites. However, now we're gonna look at some of the more, um, I guess, harder to keep corals, and just stuff that I am I'm genuinely interested about getting in the near future, specifically being like some rose bubble tip anemones, um, carpet and enemies and things of that sort. So we'll look at those and finally we'll have a look at what corals I ended up getting from Nature Aquariums. So let's do it. So your, your carpet nems, the more rarer of the anemones, are okay. um, Oh right. So you've got your red, your pink there. Yep. And then your normal green. Yep. And I just noticed these bubble tip and enemies, right? So they're all propagated, so they've never been in the ocean at once. Right. So that's forest fire. The colours are insane. Yeah, the red and the greens. Yeah. I'm guessing these are more anemones. Or are they torches? Yeah. Oh, uh, they're these more, are more yeah. anemones. Green bubble tips. Um, in here you've got an uh, adhesive. So just like uh, a, wow. a crisper and a mag, which is actually. You can see a clown oh, yeah, in their host room. In there, yeah. um, clowns don't actually host bubble tips, they host magnificas. Okay. So this one in here um, is its natural home, so it's come out of the wild like that. Okay. Um, same as these guys in here, living in a big mag. Wow. Um, they actually don't, in the wild, live in bubble tips. You normally get maroons that are in bubble tips. Yeah. Not, not the clown, not the normal clowns. Yeah, Ocelaris clowns, right. So these ones are your Great Barrier Reef clowns. They look, yeah, um, insane. They're quite big and... Mean, possibly. Possibly, mate. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't like anything else trying to come in and take their home. Oh, yeah. Of course, and they have every right to defend their home. And that's a single anemone, the size of that. That one there, yeah, that's a... 
That's one single Jeez. showpiece for 900 bucks. Um, any anemone lover that just wants one big nem. That looks like it'd be tank. worth a few grand. I'm gonna. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's insane. And it comes with the clowns. And there's three clowns oh, right. in there, actually. Okay. There's two big ones, and there was a small one in there. Um, he pops his head out every now and then. Yeah. Wow, that's that's cool. Uh, but these are your trackies, so these are probably your more wow. higher end trackies. Yeah. Yeah, this is what they call a master. Right, so it's okay. got yellow, it's got green, it's got red. So it's like, yeah, multi, multi-coloured, yeah. Nearly rainbow. Rainbow's yeah. one more step up. Um, but they all range in colour and patterns. Yeah. And they come out of the kite. They only come out of one place. Oh, okay. Um, you do get the, the greener ones coming out of cans and some lavender. Yeah. But you really only get the spectacular Those, ones coming uh, out of okay. the kite. And, and right. Cool. Uh, scullies. Oh yeah, my I'd say my personal favourite of yeah. all corals I've seen so far. Um, people do struggle with them. Yeah. Uh, a tip I, I learned recently is a lot of people feed them a lot of pallets. Yeah. A lot, a lot of media foods, and they just don't like that over long term. Okay. Just not what they they used to in the wild. So they're like um, more of a new, like a liquid based nutrient. Yeah. So when they're open, you probably best to yeah. get a bit of or some vinyl. Okay. Right. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed that video. Um, it was a bit different to what I originally had planned. I was going to do a store tour. However, there are plenty of amazing store tours about nature aquariums on YouTube. Some of them being the um, store tour that Blake made from Blake's Aquatics and also Sam Parker from Parker's Reef. He went and actually got some really amazing corals for his dream saltwater aquarium, which is something I have been completely invested in. I want to see every single thing that he does with that tank. But um, yeah, it's just a really great shop the corals are doing really well so I actually ended up getting a two heads of blaster musa two heads meaning it's like one sort of like this stem thing and then the there's like two polyps of blastos which branch out from that I specifically chose the blastos because um, Jono said that they were a really great easy coral to keep they sort of indicate the water and how it's doing because their heads will sort of shrink up if the water isn't too well. Um, but these corals are really out, they're displaying really, really well. And they've got phenomenal colours being that sort of like red rim. And then they've got this sort of like turquoise green centre in them. And I also ended up getting this one specific Recordia morph that I saw. And it looks exactly like a rose bubble tip anemone in terms of the colours. And I like to call it the uh, the forest fire morph red um, coral bit. It's a really cool mushroom coral. I'm a big fan of the mushrooms and I just love how it's doing. And it's probably my favourite coral in the tank at the moment. However, more corals are definitely to come. So make sure you stay invested. I also do have another video filmed at Nature Aquariums, which is coming out very soon. Um, and I'm editing that as we speak and um, it's doing really good. So... If you want to see more videos like that, make sure that you um, let me know in the comment section down below, hit the subscribe button, the bell, all that amazing jazz, and um, yeah, that's basically it. So as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Aussie Australian, bodgy out. Exposure.